Hey guys, today we will be looking back at the balance of the game a little bit because we do consume a lot of Stardust and actually don't make so much of it. So we will be increasing the amount of Stardust we generate. And also we will introduce a new resource that will be acquired by sifting ionized Stardust and that resource will be used for the next feature. Next feature in the game. So yeah, that's it. That's what we're going to do today. So we will start by making a kind of counter, if we wish that will track the amount of ties we uncover in the sifting game. And then we will have milestones that when we reach, reach special specific milestones, that give us permanent stardust bonus generation. Okay. So making this isn't very hard really. Um, what we want to do is create a new object in data that will track the amount of tiles which have been uh, uncovered. And at the same time, we want to track maybe a level or something so that every X amount of tiles being uncovered, there's an increase, right, in status generation. So, yeah. Let's uh, let's start by creating the data objects. I'm creating a new class. I think it's going to be a little bit easier this way. Uh, it's going to be a very small one, but you know, probably yeah, probably clearer. So we just need to extend resource, give it a name, and a few things in it. So honestly, I don't see any reason why we want we would want to save the grid or the progress of the grid, right? If the player closes the game and has a grid reset, it shouldn't matter, I think. There's no yeah, there's there, there's nothing in the grid which we do want absolutely to keep over a save and load. So Instead, yeah, I will uh, create a milestone and a count properties. All right, so nothing huge, just a simple level progress pattern. Um, we will just declare it here and we will be able to go jump in the setting game script to do something about it. So before going in the sifting game script, what I will do is probably a little bit weird, but I will add a variable in the sifting time um, scene so that we can reference the sifting game object when we generate a new tile. The idea is that I do want the sifting tile to access its parent. Um, it may be considered weird, right? We could use signals to get the information back on top of it. Actually, well, well, let let's use signals. It's gonna be it's gonna be fine. So here we will want to create a new signal, which is basically emitted when the tile is revealed. So we do have the signal being emitted. Now we just need to connect it to a method in there. 
now that we have a method to receive the signal, we do want to connect each and every tie to this method. So here we generate the ties. I don't think we, yeah, we just want to do that here. So we will have something like node dot tie reveal. Yes, connect to the method on tie reveal. Okay, so the connection is done. Now we just need to populate this method. So what we want to do is to increase the progress um, of the minigame level, right? In fact, let's have two new methods. I'm not so sure about what I'm doing here, but um, the idea is that we should have an increase of, actually that's quite big, but we should have a cost of 8, then 8 power 2, and then 8 power 3. I think that's what I did here. Well, we will see that. So very simple, if the progress is superior or equal to the reach, we increase the level and reset the progress. That should keep us going. Maybe we do want to show the level somewhere. Um, yeah, where can we have this? Maybe at the middle of the screen on the top here? That could be a thing, I think. Okay, so we do have a new label in there. Well, maybe, just maybe. It's not going to be aligned with this, but yeah, let's not overthink this at the moment. This is not a UI placement episode. So we do want to load the level at some point when we start here. So let's have a... So maybe we can try this right now by deleting the save file and running the game. A new game. Of course. Of course I didn't sign this. I never do. Mini game is unlocked, I should be able to reveal eight ties to level up. And there is no level up. So by checking the save file, I do see that the progress in 26, why the level is zero. So that's, uh, that's very, oh, I know why. I didn't actually create, I'm sure, I'm sure that's it. I didn't put the check at the end of the progress here. Yes, exactly. Check whatever. All right, that should be working now. There you go. So now, technically, 
we need to reveal 64 ties, so we have 25, 50, so that's about in the middle of third grid. Revealing ties, it should be leveling up at the middle of this grid, I think. Yeah. Good. So the level up is definitely working. So that's cool. Uh, I just need to rebalance my nebulas a little bit because it's a new game, isn't it? So three is a, a good value for nebulas to generate things, if I remember correctly. Anyway, let's uh, let's not spend too much time here. So now, what I want to do is to basically have uh, the Stardust generation power to increase by one per sifting level, right? So each level in sifting will generate one Stardust per second on top of obviously generating Stardust by repeating ties. So let's do that. We do want to create a new signal, I think. Well, I'm starting to believe that we do need a sifting handler. I wanted to avoid that. But it looks like we can not avoid it by this point. Let's just go to the generator. So here in uh, generator calculation method, we just want to have the new power to increase for each level of sifting. But of sifting, there's nothing else to say more. Okay. But yeah, basically the game, well, we can do it without a handler, I guess, by forcing the calculation when there is a level up. That is a way to do that. It's definitely not the best way, but we've been quite a long time already on this mini game, so let's just let's just avoid overcomplicating everything. In this episode, I wanted to introduce a new resource, which will be necessary for the next episode. So since there is a new resource coming in, we will need a new icon for the tile reveal. Yep. So let's go do that. Oh, let's go check the poll at the same time. Oh shit, you guys wanna see Mod Factory. Well, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I'm actually gonna add the votes of Mag Magic Research and Poké Clicker together against Mod Factory. Um, let's go in Minerals. That's super weird, but I like it. Okay, let's go with this one. I absolutely didn't plan this, but we're gonna have liquid stardust. Let's go. All right, so if I wanna recreate a new resource, um, I need to create it in data, and to create a hand, give me, oh no. 
Oh my god. Uh. You know what? I I'm gonna do something I will before anything else, uh, I was I wanted to rebalance things and I think that we'll start in the shape of increasing the power of the Stardust Generation upgrade. So I will just do that very quickly. Um, increase the Stardust Generator power by 2 instead of 1 for the CCU02. Look at it, like it's done. So as usual, when we make a handler, we do want to create it in there. So we'll create a new node. And you know what? I will just create another new node. So that's gonna be resources. It will be there and we will have Stardust, very nice Stardust, Consciousness Core, and Node 2, because Node 2 is now Liquid Stardust. 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 Yep. So, Liquid Stardust, where are you? You are here. There you are. You already have to. No, I don't. That's cool. So we did create a new resource. So now that the new resource exists, we need to add it to the game. So how are we gonna do that? Maybe 50-50 that it appears on the grid. Yep, maybe. Let's have a little bit more. Maybe we can have, let's have three guaranteed liquid stardust per grid. Yeah, let's do that. So first, before anything, we want to create a new state, which is going to be liquid, Stardust. Okay, what else do we need to add? We need to add the liquid stardust texture. Mm -hmm. And here we do want to add a new line. So we do need to reference the right thing in there. And of course, we must not forget to have this handler liquid stardust. And let's have a random amount between two and three being generated. I don't know, I'm pretty much making stuff up at this point. Okay, so now we want to generate those tiles. Is it tiles? Wait. Oh, generate loot. All right, my bad. So base artist, blah, blah, blah. So here. And we increase the counter. Then we reset the counter and we do the same with Stardust. Seems like it's good. 
it looks like all we need to do is to change the user interface to have now a label display. So we're going to create a new label. I'm going to take whoops, this script here. So I realized very recently that there is something called a, as built-in script, which allows us to make script without creating a file. And that's cool for this kind of situation because this script is literally just useful for this label. So we don't need to have a separate file. So anyway, that's going to be liquid stardust label. All right. And let's create this. And let's stop the game. So I want to do that. Oh yeah, oh no, I removed the early, oh yuck. It's actually quite cool. I mean, you, you probably don't feel it because you're just copying this, but yeah, it's like the more I go in this project, the more satisfying it, it gets. So I guess, I guess that's it. I guess that's it for, for this episode. Let me get back straight up. So, yeah, we have created a new resource. We have now a sifting level. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Well, why am I playing the game? So, that episode was just, you know, a little intermed. Intermed? I don't know. It was just an in-between before uh, the sifting era and the next series of episodes, which will come in the form of a new feature, a brand new feature. Uh, at the start of the next episode, I will, I will show you the code for the next CC upgrade that will be used to unlock the next switch right so i will create a new upgrade and i will just give you the code at the start of the episode so yeah i hope you enjoyed uh creating a new resource uh, i actually very much liked it myself uh, i didn't plan to have this to be liquid starters but hey happens what happens and you don't know what the next feature is, but really it's actually quite fortunate because somehow it makes sense with what's coming in the next episode. So if you want to know uh, in advance what is coming up in the next episodes, you can always go on the Discord where there's all the information, roadmaps and that kind of things. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next episode.